Hi, it's uh, John Reed, JDOD.com. We are at TechEd. We're going to talk mobility because we got some finalists here in a mobility apps challenge. I don't even remember the official names, but there's like mobility madness tonight, and you guys, from Linear Logics, you're going to be there. We got we got Rajesh and Randy. How you doing? Great, great, John. Thanks. Awesome. So, uh, what do you think about tonight, man? You guys ready to to claim this thing? What are you going to tell the people tonight about your app? Uh, I think we are first of all very excited to be here and. Uh, a lot of things are happening, and you know, we're ready for the app challenge today and going further. Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity for us, right, uh -huh. to uh, not only participate at SAP Tech Ed, right, but um, just to showcase the value that we think we can project to the to the marketplace. We're pretty excited about sharing that. All right, guys. So one thing I really want to get across to viewers is you're not just here to to participate in a challenge. You guys are taking mobile apps to market, so we're going to talk about that. Yes, absolutely. So we are, we are here actually to actually enable our customers to transform their business using technology. So that's more important than the challenge. Challenge happens to be something fun that we're here to do. We actually reached a bit of a consensus before the shoot that a lot of mobile apps are really not very good, a lot of enterprise mobile apps. Now, now why, why would that be? So what I've seen with the, with the mobility apps that's available in the market today with the, from, a, from an enterprise perspective is there's not a strong use case for, for businesses, right? I mean, uh, for an enterprise to really adapt and get to new technology, they need to see some value. And uh, one of the most important things for, the, for, value, for value is to get an app that actually helps them transform the business and at the end of the day hit their bottom line. So tell so. us about the story of your app, which, by the way, is – already available on the SAP Store and EcoHub. Tell us the origins of this thing, because you didn't just start coding. You, you did some homework. What, what was that about? So we uh, started our, our mobile journey a couple of years ago, a year and a half, two years ago, uh, with our experience. So primarily, Linear Logic, we've been doing supply chain consulting uh, for a long time, for 10, 15 years. And over, over, the, over the period of 10 years, we've seen and implemented customer so the supply chain solutions across the board. Uh, different customers, and we've seen certain pain points that every customer hits constantly. And that was our starting point. When we looked at mobile, mobile technology that's available in the market today, we said, how can we use this technology as an enabler to help customers get their value and resolve their pain points? So we started off with the customer pain points, identified them, we figured out how, from a technology perspective, that can be solved, bridged, and that's, that's our starting point. Came up with a pi uh, pipeline of use cases, and customer demand manager is one of the first ones that's actually addressing a very, very critical demand management space gap. So would you agree, Randy, that if, if you don't take the time to develop with customers uh, around their pain points that you're going to probably build a bad app? Yeah, I think so, John. I mean, one of the things that I'm particularly uh, I'm very excited about Customer Demand Manager is, is it's really understanding the business problem of forecasting. It, for a company, it's probably the number one problem that they have is really trying to understand what their customer demand is. What do my customers want? When do they want it? How do they want it? Where do they want it? So absolutely, I think it's really understanding those significant value drivers in the company, those pain points, and how can we use mobile technology to extend the functionality of SAP. Now, you were also saying this is kind of high stakes for companies. Give us some idea of the numbers at stake for companies around this forecasting. Yeah, so that's a good question, John. Um, I've done a lot of assessments in, in my career. These are, this is a multi-million dollar problem. Companies, their inability to understand what their demand is. Um, so, so basically, I'll give you an idea. Uh, one of the bigger problems is not having an accurate forecast. Why is there not an accurate forecast? Well, generally, it might take the, sale, the field, uh, the sales uh, force, in the field three weeks to enter their data in the system, okay? So you have timely problems. Sometimes the data is not accurate, so you have a lot of iterations associated with that. Ultimately, what happens is a demand planner will have to, if it's not a very predictable item that you can statistically forecast, he'll guess. Right. He'll hedge. The cost of hedging could be multi-millions of dollars. So I recently had a client. They would hedge plus or minus 15% of the sales forecast every single month. It's a $60 billion client. That's a, that could be up to a $9 billion hedge, and they're doing that every month. Now, if you're wrong, that's a problem. This is a multi-million dollar problem that co companies go through every year. Okay. All right, so in that case, 
how does mobility fit in? Can I just do that on my computer? Well, I mean, uh, the, the key issue that Randy just brought up is how quickly and uh, you can get accurate data back to your backend system for processing. So with mobile, mobile app, you have the flexibility to be able to update real time from any place, right? I mean, you don't have to sit in your office to do your stuff. As a sales rep, you're constantly on the, on the road. You're going into customers, you're, you're talking to them. How convenient would it be if you have a tablet where you can actually enter the numbers directly right there, right. and that goes real time back to your backend system, as opposed to going back to your uh, hotel room and then trying to think, okay, what did we talk? You know, did, did I put right. like 100 or did he say 150? And, it, and now you're starting to hedge, right? right. So right. that inaccuracy comes, you know, it's, it's completely gotten rid of with this, with this technology. And keep in mind, some of these sales reps, they could be selling hundreds of products or what we might call SKUs, right? Well, when you get back here, Otelia, you're away from these conversations, and every month that comes around, I've got to get my forecast in. And it's not just for orders that are like next month. It's like, what am I doing with these customers with their hundreds of products over the next 12 right. months? This app gives them the ability to look at all the, co all the things that they have been buying, what their forecast accuracy is, and really have an intelligent conversation with their client. And if I'm driving my daughter to her high school prom or whatever, and i got to pull over and get that information, I don't want to be behind a desk. I, I hear you. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us uh, about how long it took to build the app and what was the end result. What, so, how did you do it? So uh, th that's a very good question. So building the front-end app itself, you know, just the development piece is not very complicated. With the technology and middleware that, you know, companies like SAP is providing, you know, it's very easy to develop, uh, you know, apps in, in any platform, right, AOS, Android, whatever it may be. The key is identifying what you want to build, uh, and that takes a lot longer. And then the other piece that takes a lot longer is how cool, what is your UI, how quickly and simple can you make it in the front end. I don't want to be sitting in an app that's churning, you know, for, for like 10 seconds. You know, 90 seconds is too late. You know, yeah. I want to be able to get my data quickly, simple, without having to confu uh, confusions, and then on time. So that's, those are the things that took, took us longer. The development piece was very quick. Okay, so how long did that sort of customer requirements, pain points piece take, and then how long did the development piece take? So um, the identification of the use case took, took us, say, about four, four months, four or five months. Okay. So I ended out and exactly figured out what and how we're going to build this. The app development itself took us maybe a month and a half, and, um, and, out of the, and maybe another half month, one month for the UI piece. But, but so let's chat a little bit about that because it's a little bit more than just the time associated with doing that. It's, it's the 40-plus years of knowledge of understanding That's a really good point, SAP. Andy understanding APO and how the clients are applying it. So if you don't understand at a very intimate level what SAP is doing and what it's doing with the customers and how it's configured, your ability to then take that into an app is fairly limited. Right. So part of the implications I'm getting from what you're saying is if I'm an aspiring developer and I have great UI skills but I don't understand SAP all that well, I might want to look to partner with someone who has that deeper industry knowledge to try to create a complete solution. Is that kind of what you're getting at? I think that's exactly what we're saying. Yep. I think that's a good way to put it, John. So there's two pieces to that, right? One is the industry knowledge, the process knowledge, yep. and then the technology like SAP, for example. How does the SAP system work in the space? Yep. And then understanding the technology behind SAP, which a lot of front-end app developers don't have that knowledge as well. Right, so right. one of the big components is SOUP, right? Yes. And it's configuring SOUP as the middleware to be able to communicate with SAP and the mobile app. Right. If you don't understand intimately those data feeds and what you're connecting to and why, all of a sudden that simple use case that you think you have or that really nice app that you have yeah. is not really the app you're looking for. Guys, we should wrap the shoot soon, but just give viewers the short version of the SAP tools and technologies that you use to build this. So we, uh, we are primarily SAP partner. Uh, we work with SAP very closely. So most of our technology, be getting, getting this app up and running, has been SAP. So we use SAP's uh, Sybase SUP uh, as a middleware, um, Afaria's MDM tool, and uh, uh, SAP SEM as a back end for demand planning. And the technical piece wasn't hard for you. It was really more the use case piece that you had to put some energy Absolutely into. Absolutely right. Okay. Right. Yep. And then the front end, it is native app, so we yep. built with export. Final quick question. Uh, are you seeing implications for HANA and, and cloud in this? Absolutely. I think, uh, I think the real, real future lies in getting data real time quickly from a com cloud kind of computing system 
into a front-end like mobile. So that's really where the future is. So our next apps are going to be HANA-based uh, and cloud-based. All right, guys, we got to wrap, but be honest with me. Are you going to win tonight? Yes, we uh, are, John. No <laughs> doubt about that. <laughs> I thought so. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, John.